basically an update of what has been changed or ha has changed since last Phos4G and uh, I'll also give a quick introduction beforehand so that uh, everyone that is not aware of Stack is getting a bit of a feeling of what Stack is. So Stack itself as a like broader term around everything that is out there for Stack is a, basically a suite of specifications and software. So it's not just a specification, it's also accompanied by software, it's a community, you could say. Uh, it's like maybe comparable to Pangeo, I, I would say. And then the Stack specification itself describes geospatial and temporal data, right? That is basically through putting your, your metadata in uh, JSON files and then they are linked um, together uh, and residing on a bucket or so as static files. And the stack API specification is the second part that builds on top of the stack specification that adds uh, the dynamic elements to the uh, stack specification basically for, so for example, search, aggregation, transactions, and all these different things that uh, you can't do with like, just static files uh, in a bucket or on a file system. There are a couple of different entities in the stack specification defined. There is a catalog, a collection, and an item. And the catalog, for example, is a simple structure to group different entities, like a collection or an item, together in a static structure because you don't have the dynamic elements and you don't want to have like thousands of files in a, a single collection, for example. Um, and then, the example here, for example, for a catalog could be all Sentinel-2, uh, level 2A imagery for a specific day, right? You can group by different variants, like years, days, months, etc. cetera. Um, and the collection is basically like a catalog, but with more metadata to it that groups things that are similar. So uh, you can, for example, add more data, like an extend, license providers, etc., that you don't do in a catalog. A catalog is just an ID, description, title, etc. And here an example would be the um, Sentinel-2 uh, Sentinel L2A uh, data all complete. An item itself then is the uh, smallest entity in the in the end. That's like in the in the tree. Data files at specific locations uh, for a specific date and time or an interval, and that's a GeoJSON file with all the metadata for, for example, a specific Sentinel-2 scene. Then there is assets and links, which are also very similar to each other. The assets basically are the data that you want to download in the end. Um, that is often data that you want to have for machine consumption in your workflows. And links are related resources for often for human consumption, sometimes also for machine consumption. But that could be, for example, documentation about the individual uh, Sentinel-2 things that you have. Um, and it does is also used for the um, linking between the individual entities, between collections, so that you link, can link from a collection to an uh, item, for example. And here you see an example. Um, that is how a static uh, structure could look like. You have a root catalog on top, and then underneath you can have various structures with, uh, that are combined from catalogs and collections, and then at the bottom you have the items, and that is include the assets in the end. The catalogs here are a bit uh, yeah, grayed out because they ba basically are flattened out in the API later. So that because you have the dynamic structure, you don't need the catalogs anymore for substructuring the, the collections. So they are basically not there anymore, and you have just the collection where you can search through, etc. There are various extensions to the stack specification, um, 60 plus extensions in total right now, um, and that is open to uh, whatever you need. You can add your own things to the stack specification itself. You can write new extensions. That's all open. Um, in the following, everything that is yellow is new since last Phos4G, and everything that is white is, has been there before. Um, so new extensions, for example, include the context extension, uh, the forecast extension, language extension, uh, order extension, statistics extension, themes, and web map links. Um, and we did a ma larger maturity update to the extension, so that is basically going through the extension, checking how many implementations are there, um, and how many open issues are there that could break the extension so that we get into a state where we can say this extension is stable and you can really build on top of it and this is a candidate and others are still maybe under development and uh, you can still try it out but it's not as fleshed out maybe as uh, you may think. 
stable extensions right now are electro optical for spectral imagery, uh, then file info for like adding file sizes, etc., item asset definition, projection, scientific citation, and re view ge geometry. And candidate extensions are data cube, processing extension, raster, SAR, satellite, and version indicator. Although for raster, we will see later that that may not be getting to stable right now, but go back to uh, or keep in, in candidate or pilot state due to other changes that we are planning in uh, the next version. Um, and that's exactly that, the bands RFC. So right now, due to the history of stack, we have two places where you can define bands, basically. So we have EO bands and raster bands. And EO bands is basically for the spectral bands, and raster bands is more for the layers in a file or so. And uh, these are very similar and have a lot of overlap. So the thought now is to target in 1.1 that we merge EO bands and raster bands basically together into a sim sing single structure that then raster and EO extend in the end. Um, so that means some of the common uh, fields like name and description and statistics go into the core specification with the band structure and then raster extends it like raster spatial resolution would be a single field that you add or EO wavelength would be an EO defined. That also adds the ability that you can use these fields basically in the asset level without defining bands. So for example, raster spatial resolution right now can only be, find, be used in assets, but if you don't have really bands or just a single band, you do, don't want to have this whole structure, you can just use raster spatial resolution in the asset and define what the spatial resolution is. Um, here's an example how it looked before, that's the white one, and then the uh, yellow one is the new one, so that you see that there are well, there were two structures before, um, and now it's merged into one. The important thing here is that the uh, prefixes that we use for extensions like EO bands was only in the top level here, and now that moves to the second level, right? So the first level is just bands with a like, name description that is unprefixed as it's in core. And then EO and raster built on top of that and the, the prefixes move to the second level basically. That's a bit of a change that you need to do, but I mean it's in the end uh, just renaming fields. The Stack API specification was recently released into 1.0. That was uh, like taking two more years than the Stack specification itself. Uh, also for waiting on to the OGC API um, counterparts that we are building on top of. Um, that is now available and can uh, be built on top of. Um, it's a stable release, so uh, go ahead and implement it. That would be great. Um, and it's built on top of HTTP and JSON, uh, as you may know. It has multiple parts right now. We extend, uh, extracted the extension into separate repositories, and the API specification itself just has core, item search, collections, and features right now. Collections and features built on, uh, on top of OGC API features. And you see here the structure again from the uh, other um, image that I had earlier. Basically, uh, when you migrate from a static structure into an API structure, then the catalogs basically get removed. You just have the root catalog that links to collections, and then you have items underneath, and you can search through them uh, via the API interface. The API itself is extensible again. Um, there are a couple of extensions out there for the API. Uh, well, that is that is a uh, wrong thing here. 60 plus are not true. That is from a properly copy paste error. It must be 10 plus. <laughs> um, they have been moved, uh, as I said, into a new organization, so they're all there, and they have different levels of maturity as well, like the uh, other extensions, so some of them are more mature than the others. Um, new extensions are right now aggregation, collection search, and language, especially collection search was always asked for, so that is now up there, uh, also an implementation out there right now, um, and if you need that, uh, also feel free to implement that. Um, other extensions that are out there, for example, are filter, which is pretty important to like really um, define fine-grained um, search queries and uh, that builds on top of the OGC API extensions as well. Um, but that is still not completely released in the OGC API world, so we're still waiting for that and then we can release that as well to the public. Oh, it's public, but it's like not stable yet. Um, from last year, there have been a lot of additional catalogs out there that have, or APIs that have been added. Um, just a list here of some that um, I know of. Rapid AI for AO, Finland has uh, implemented something, Romania, Polar Geospatial Center, Econem, Up42, that we will see in the next talk. 
um, Land Information New Zealand, and there is a couple of open uh, catalogs uh, from uh, commercial providers like Capella, Maxar, and Planet as well out there that you can use for uh, often a disaster response, for example. And now going to the ecosystem of things. Uh, in general, uh, to the ecosystem, I call it ecosystem, but like there has been a new website since last year with more tutorials and more information about Stack, so go check that out. The tutorials are uh, targeted mostly at uh, beginners right now, I think, um, but we are extending that over time. Um, there have also been recently some tutorials in Japanese, so if you are Japanese and uh, good in that language, then go ahead and check that out. Um, and then uh, the, for the API, there's now also a Stack API validator. So if you want to check your API implementation, whether that's conformant, you can use that tool. Um, in different programming languages, we have got new clients as well, like in Rust, there is PG Stack Rust right now, um, and in Julia, there is Stack Julia, Stack Cube Julia, in R, there's Stack Forecast for forecasting. And um, that is for the like languages that uh, are not so big right now for Python and JavaScript, we have the next slides. And there are already existing implementations that I didn't list here because they were available for last Phosphor-G. Like in C-sharp, Java, Go, Ruby, and Scala, there are also implementations for uh, as clients, so you can use Stack in a variety of programming languages already. If you want to know more about the ecosystem itself, there is a long list of tools available at Stack Index. For Python, there is uh, a lot of changes recently. Um, so Stackfast API um, has been made ready for Stack API 1.0, so if you're still on an older version, update that, and you will get the 1.0 uh, implementation for free, basically. Um, the backends are split now into separate repositories, so PG Stack and the other one uh, are now in separate repositories, so you need to get that in separately. Um, PyStack has been uh, enhanced with several new features and are preparing actually for a 2.0 release, um, probably around the time where uh, Stack 1.1 comes out. PyStack Client made, has made, been made ready for 1.0 of the API, and Stack Tools got a lot of new packages that you use, for example, for uh, creating uh, like metadata from existing uh, data that is out there, but not in Stack. Uh, for, for conversion. And then uh, there's also like uh, improvements all around the ecosystem and stack tools. For example, footprint generation um, made, was been, uh, has been made anti-meridian aware. Um, it also only generates the geometry for the valid data in the file, not just like the, the, the full extent of the file, basically. Uh, stack assets has been released, which is basically the uh, tool to download the data the other clients were mostly for consuming the API and then getting the metadata out, and then Stack Assets now is for actually downloading the data that are available as assets. PyGeo API also got Stack support in the last year, which is great. Um, that is more an OGC API uh, server, basically, that also now supports Stack. The JavaScript ecosystem, there is a dedicate, uh, dedicated talk in 40 minutes that I'll also be giving here. Um, so I'm not going into more details here, um, just there is uh, Stack.js uh, added to the ecosystem, which is like drop-in replacement for JavaScript uh, objects that uh, add on top of the JSON properties that you have, additional methods for convenience. Uh, Stack layer has been written, rewritten on top of Stack.js now and is uh, more capa cap capable of reading the metadata and, and making use of it for the cog uh, visualization. There is a PR open for open layers, so that open layers also can consume stack files easily so that it renders by default the uh, cocks, for example, that are in there, renders the bounding boxes, etc. And stack browser version 3 has been released. There's also a dedicated talk today at 16 uh, o'clock um, about it, which, which, which uh, explains all the new features in there. That is a web UI for, for showing uh, or consuming the metadata in your browser. Stack Server was made ready for uh, API 1.0 as well and supports now the aggregation extension um, and open search, which is nice. The aggregation extension now allows you to like, uh, really dig into the data by aggregating uh, statistics and then having a nice view on your map, uh, basically, that um, was uh, hard before because if you have large search results, then well, you, your map is just too slow. So getting to the future plans of Stack, um, so, of course, now that we have released API 1.0, 
the, we would like to get more implementations that are API 1.0 compliant so that um, the ecosystem stabilizes. Um, we would like to finalize and release the API extensions as a 1.0 because many of them are still in release candidate state or even earlier. Um, there will be a stack sprint number seven in Philadelphia in September. So if you want to join that, uh, keep the f or follow the social media accounts for an announcement about that. Um, stack 1.0 one should be, or we will be working on that in the sprint, and then we will see whenever we can release that, hopefully some at the end of the year or something like that. That includes the bands RFC, the band changes, uh, improvements from common metadata, clarifications, everything that we collected in the last two years, basically. Um, we are currently also working on uh, PSC guidelines and the PSC governance model. So there is a PSC already, but we have not no guidelines really for it that uh, is now established so that um, there is a bit more uh, trust that can be, um, uh, yeah, there's, that you can hopefully better trust the stack community and what we are doing there. And we are submitting or trying to submit stack and stack API as an OGC community standard. Uh, here's a list of related talks about Stack. Just listed them here for your convenience so that if you are uh, into Stack and want to go to other talks. Um, the Stack Check one was actually cancelled, so you can't go to that one, of course. Um, but all the others should be still up and running in the next days or today, mostly today. Um, and here I have just a list of resources. Slides are available at this URL here, and then you can just click them all. Um, for different things. We have community calls as well, a Google, uh, Google group right now where you can join and then you can, are invited to the calls. If you want to join that and be part of the community, uh, participate or just get informed about uh, status updates, then it's a good thing to join the community calls. If you want to work uh, on Stack a bit more and help us shape it, then the working sessions are a good uh, call. That's it. Now I'm open for questions and answers, Matt probably as well. For sure. Um, I mean, it's not easily searchable, of course, but I mean, if it's a small catalog, many of the small catalogs out there from Planet, exam, for example, it's also still static um, because then you can just browse through. If it's just a couple of files, you can just browse through. If it gets like in the thousands of files, you may want to add search, but static stack is still supported by uh, clients and the software that's still fine, yeah. Yeah, uh, Stack Browser has been updated from version two to version three. That's like complete rewrite. I mean, you, you probably haven't used it for creation. You have used it for browsing it, right? I think I, yeah, I, think I created Stack, the Python, Python? Yep. Yeah, Python to browse the Python stack to create a catalog. Exactly. And, and then I ran the build tool for that stack that gave me the website. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Does it work still like that? It still works like that. Um, it still works like that. It doesn't have any like pre-rendering capabilities anymore. Uh, maybe uh, you've done that and generate HTML for, for that. That's not there anymore. Now it's more that you just host the file somewhere of the, cal of the browser. It's just a couple of HTML files and then you can browse through it. Um, you don't need to generate the HTML files anymore. So it's just really a, an application that can run without having the HTML files sitting on the bucket. And it doesn't have to run as a application? No, it's really just browser-based. You can just upload an HTML file, a couple of JavaScript files, CSS files, and then it just runs uh, and everywhere. Towards the catalogs. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Sure. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, well, I have a question, Matthias. Uh, cool. <laughs> 
there, I mean, there is no direct relationship between them. There is, like, we can submit to OGC, for example, and then there might be a more direct relationship, but otherwise it's more that we are, I mean, the OGC community and the stack community are just working together to align the specifications, basically. Um, and both are open to that, so that's, that's not like contrary, but we're working together really to align those and build stack on top of OGC APIs, basically. Would you agree with that? <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, we, we do have a few minutes, so you know, now's your chance. How, how many folks are actively using this stack right now? I mean, it implemented the catalog. Okay, and then the rest of you probably are, uh, are, are just leveraging the existing catalogs. Okay. Well, you have a question right here? Yeah, it's uh, about like a question about to, to create, you know, I have a bunch of uh, raw data, satellite data. Uh, they are zipped, they are extracted, and I want to create a catalog to, uh, for my team to look into the data. So, uh, what the three or four main points to that for you. How to, uh, where to begin? It's static, uh, like uh, I have it on disk, and I can upload it into a SQL bucket. That's maybe more my more question for you, right? <laughs> You're more into that. Uh, <laughs> so, like, how, how, how to create a stack? Yeah, but really roughly, like, uh, should I extract all the data? Uh, it's not covered. Should I? Uh, should, should you can should you convert it to cloud? Or data, yeah, because the raw data, they are raw, so you don't want to convert them because you know, it's a whole new download in context. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's totally fine to have a stack catalog that points to tar files uh, or, or any, it doesn't care. They don't have to be cogs. Uh, the advantage, of course, is, is on usage of that data. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's still, if you're, just, if you're just concerned about searching what those files are and you don't uh, want to necessarily do ranged reads, partial reads on those files, then the tar file is fine. Um, or you can implement cloud on these tar files, that's actually a <laughs> So like, actually in the next talk, we also have the same problem. Uh, we can, uh, I can help uh, later to that. Okay. Okay, uh, if, there's any, if there's a quick question, uh, in the back. I guess the same question you asked, or do you see versus the stack? The CSCLP has been there forever. I know nobody really uses the OGC CSCLP kind of API. And stack seems to be touching that, but it would be really nice if it was a stack. Yeah. We implement only once. Yeah, I mean, OGC now goes through the, like, Evolvement and goes through towards OGC APIs, right? And OGC API records is, uh, well, basically the, the new version of CSW, I guess. Um, Stack itself started earlier than OGC APIs, so we had to uh, basically uh, adopt what they are doing there. Um, but we built on top of features because it was earlier, but there is still records and we are in communication with them. For example, I, I talked about the context extension, the themes extension, as basically just uh, building blocks from OGC that we're reusing. And ideally, in the end, you could um, use both side by side or that uh, stack is uh, built on top of records, basically. That's not quite there yet, but it's very close. So uh, whenever we see conflicts between them, we try to uh, solve them. Um, Why I, haven't you submitted the standards? Pardon? Why haven't you submitted the standards? You are not using standards. Yeah, we are we're working on that right now. So uh, that, that's still a work in progress, but should be there. That doesn't, of course, uh, always solve the, the conflicts that might be there between specifications. There are a couple of them. Some are harder, some are uh, less of an issue. Um, we try to solve the hard ones, and the less, the, the, some are, we can't easily solve due to how the specifications are written right now, because we don't want to break existing tools and specifications. Um, but we're trying to mitigate as much as possible. I've written a, con a crosswalk between both, which shows where, where the differences are. If you're interested in that, come later after the talk and I can give you the link to it, and then you can see where they are aligned and where they are not aligned yet. Um, and that's 
not a lot. So, so if you want to implement both, there is, uh, you could probably do that.